Okay, so I'm nearly done erasing everything. Uh, there's just one more tool I wanted to show you that I was going to use on part of this before I moved on to the next step. So right here, I have this little circular plate. And I want that plate to have paint on it, but I don't want any of this other bit having paint on it. So that is represented right here in the texture editor. And I could try and somehow erase some part of the uh, part of this UV patch without erasing the circle, but that would be very difficult and not as precise. So what I can do instead is I can do something called freezing. So if I go over here to the uh, tool panel to my freeze tool, and I use the circular lasso. I can drag a circle around that plate and it becomes frozen. I'll do the same thing to the other side. And you'll see now it has this moving checkerboard pattern on it. And what that means is that if I use the erase tool on this entire shell, it will not affect what's been frozen. So if I go back to my erase tool and I start erasing then you'll see the frozen section still has the paint on it and that'll be much cleaner than if I tried to use only the erase tool by itself so I'm just going to very quickly All right, so in order to unfreeze this, I go up to freeze, and then unfreeze all, which I have uh, set to control D, which is the exact same key or hotkey in Photoshop for deselecting. So I'll hit control D, and now it's unfrozen and we have that small little section of paint there. Now I don't need my highlight layer anymore so I'll go up to highlight and I will delete that. And now we have our object only partially painted which is what we want. Okay so I'm gonna move on to something a little different. I'm gonna focus on the, uh, the tubing right here. So sort of these tubes and cables and I'm going to make a new smart material for that real quick and also a new layer for it. So I'll call this one, this will be my rubber layer. Go to Ascension and I'll make a smart material specifically for it. Now this one in particular, it's going to be very dark gray. And it's going to have a pretty high roughness value, but not 100%. Maybe 80. There we go, that seems all right. And then for the depth, I'm going to pick something a little different. I'm going to pick this uh, sort of chain link fence texture that I have. I reduce the intensity on that to maybe just 20%. And then I'll also invert it. So then it looks like very small rubber pads. Not sure how well it's going to show up on such a small object, but it's good to know that it's there. Now something else I'm going to do is I'm also going to add in another layer on top of that. and it'll just be some roughness and it'll be a slightly lighter gray and it'll just be applied in sort of patches around the material so it isn't a constant uh, black texture. Yeah, just some noise. I'll pick this snowy one. There we go. Maybe invert. 
invert it, increase the scale, and then make it, there we go. Just something a little, just to break it up a bit. There we go, I'll save that. Now the problem with this though is that if I apply it onto the cables right now, you'll see that they already have some normal detail from our metal layer. Now if we apply the normal map from this material onto that, the two normal maps are going to be combined. One doesn't just overwrite the other. So what we need to do is we need to erase the normal map detail off of that, but not erase the layer itself because that is our base layer. And erasing that could have some unintended consequences. Luckily, there is a way to erase just the normal mapping from a particular layer. So I'm in my main arm, which is this back one. And I know that this large chunk right here is represents all of the cables. So what I can do is go to base metal and with my erasing tool I can cross out color and uh, gloss so now the erase tool will only work on the normal map associated with that layer. So I'll zoom in real close to the layer, hopefully you'll be able to see the effect this has. I'll just draw over that. And now those areas are entirely smooth. Yeah, it's especially prominent right here. And while I'm at it, I'll probably erase some of the metal textures from the pistons as well since I'm going to be getting rid of those too. You can also change the display mode in the texture editor to normals to see what you're doing. So you can see there's a little bit of roughness here. So I can just get rid of that to make it perfectly smooth. Okay, so now I'm ready to actually apply this material. So now, now you'll notice when I uh, do the little preview here, you'll see the uh, the normal map coming through, but you'll see only the only the normal map is coming through, and that's because we still have our color and gloss turned off. So if we turn those back on, we will see what the actual material looks like. And now, instead of filling the area with a smart material, we're just going to paint with one. So I'll go over to this long patch right here. That is where the tubing is on the main arm. And I will just draw in there. And there we go. And then I'll do the same thing on the secondary arm. Okay, that should do it for that type of detail. So now I'm going to move on to making these pistons.